Happy holidays, everyone! Welcome back for video game pickups for the month of December. Happy holidays, everyone! And with that said, let's get started. This will be a PS4 edition. First up is a great indie game. I was happy to find physical. And that being the game Spiritfarer, which was actually a highly recommended game by one of my personal favorite critics, Yahtzee. But with that said, it's definitely a very charming and beautiful game, and it definitely has an interesting aspect compared to many other games out there. It's not your stereotypical, like, survival crafting game like so many indie games now, or roguelikes. So is there a fresh breath, or rather, a breath of fresh air, which is nice. Definitely a good game I recommend checking out. So, with that said, next up, looking at a game from Sega. The sequel to the great crossover game Puyo Puyo Tetris, Puyo Puyo Tetris 2. The ultimate puzzle match, which genuinely is a great and fun series of games. As you know by now, I've been a longtime fan and lover of Tetris as a whole, which made me a big fan of this puzzle genre. And Puyo Puyo has its own charm as well, just like games like Sega, Swirls, as well as many others. But with that said, it is a great pickup, and you can find it relatively very cheap, often on sale very easily. Next up, got, got this back when he originally launched, and of course that is Sega, or rather Sonic Colors Ultimate Edition. Just an extra overgrown box with, of course, basically extra keychains than they had basically from the original Sonic movie. Obvious, given how the Sonic keychain looks, but I'm fine with that. Just not a big fan of how much space this takes up, because in comparison to like a normal size box, it's ridiculous. But with that said, still arguably probably one of the best easily 3D Sonic games of this particular time period when it was released originally on the Nintendo Wii. So it's nice to get to play it on more modern consoles. So it's going to run better, plus it's going to run at the overall best rate. Way better than its original version, which still ran very smooth. Definitely a nice addition to any Sonic fan. Next up is a game you already know about, which, as I mentioned, was like basically my favorite game of 2020. Well, 2021. Though, I only recently started uploading some gameplays of this game finally. But yeah, it's a fun game. Occasionally did, unfortunately, in the beginning have some issues with uh, crashing occasionally till it crashed me three times in my whole playthrough so it's not too bad overall great game i do like the pixar influenced art style it used but kena bridge of spirits is great some of the puzzle stuff kind of reminds me a little bit of something like pikmin which is not a bad thing in all honesty but it's definitely a beautiful looking game and i actually really like the music at first, it was a little frustrating. It's basically a um, an action platformer, though elements, you can definitely tell it's more of an action platformer oriented game, but it definitely has the third person action game aspect, but definitely has a lot of platforming elements, but the combat is actually quite a bit of fun once you get the hang of it. And the boss battles eventually gradually get to be like epic levels which I would say RPG level, like boss battles. Next up, the first of a total of like four from Namco Bandai, which this game out, came out a while back. It can be found very dirt cheap now, but then again, that's because like half the characters are DLC, which sucks. But still, the game itself is actually a lot of fun. If you played any of the modern games, 
though these play more like you're just like small little action figures in a larger round, so it's kind of like, I guess you could compare it to some like the Toy Story World in Kingdom Hearts 3, if you want to, that's a good way to put it. It's definitely an interesting aspect game. Next up, for anybody who is a longtime fan of, of course, Pac-Man, I'm sure you know, heard about this, and that is Pac-Man Museum Plus, which includes 14 different Pac-Man games throughout many decades. As Pac-Man has been around a very long time, being really one of the original games for Namco years back. And, second to last, of course, the recently released remake to the classic original PS1 3D platformer, Pac-Man World, which I've talked about multiple times, and that being, of course, Pac-Man World Repack. Don't know about the title, but it is nice to see it back, plus the fact it also includes other stuff like multiple modes of, like, some of the classic formula and other things. And that's very much appreciated as a long-time Pac-Man fan, as is one of my favorite series of all time. Last, if you like games like uh, Hack and Slash type games or stuff like uh, Persona Strikers, this is a game I definitely highly recommend for you. Scarlet Nexus. It's a great action-based game. That plays also similar to another game I'm a big fan of, Dusk Diver. But if you've never played this, it is definitely a great uh, cell shade art style hack and slash game. Like I said, it is definitely a lot of fun. But then again, I've always been partial and had a real enjoyment for this specific style of game. It's just a lot of fun occasionally, just to have some mindless action. And definitely some very unique and interesting creature designs in the game, that's for sure. Like, who would have thought, like, a flower could become dangerous? But it does. It's weird. But that's it for this edition of Pickups. And if you're curious, the music in the background is called uh, True Love We're Making, and it's from the game Capcom vs. SNK 2. Anyways, with that said, I'll see you all next time. Happy holidays, everyone.